Ladies and gentlemen, Nvidia will be entering the RTX 50 launch in a very interesting position, given that both AMD and Intel's rival architectures will only offer performance, roughly speaking, comparable to Nvidia's mid-range Blackwell products at best. The question is then, what will Nvidia do for SKU segmentation and how much will they cut down chips like the RTX 5090 versus the full GB202 die? Well, there's a rumor floating around, as there tends to be, that Nvidia's plan for the 5090 will be to indeed significantly cut down the SM and memory bus versus GB202's full die configuration, paving the way naturally for either Super, TI, or um, TIE, versions of the products now as a very quick reminder to the specifications obviously these are not official it does seem that gb202 we're looking at 192 sm and 512 bit uh, memory bus capable of supporting gddr7 either in two or three gigabyte capacity this is a monolithic die to my personal understanding and others such as copperite 7 kimmy seem to be reporting the same thing other specifications such as the cache configuration are up in the air i have heard that there are some significant changes to the cache structure of the gaming blackwell products i've heard 96 megabytes of l2 cache seems to be present on the gb202 die however this is quite old information at this point so it's either potentially incorrect or has changed or perhaps it wasn't the full configuration as an example maybe it was 128 megabytes and some of it hadn't been enabled again it's quite difficult to know the general consensus is though that blackwell of course is going to be significantly faster than lovelace as you would expect roughly speaking the uh, 5080 seems to be outperforming that of the 4090 by a decent margin and you would expect that it's been pretty much typical for this to happen for one product generation to the other for nvidia and i suspect that Improvements will be made to perhaps increase that further still. GB202, it's slightly more difficult to narrow down. Um, it becomes trickier still when you start to figure out, well, are these simulations, in other words, hardware simulations of the chip, or are we talking about actual test chips, which have, for example, been tested in raster performance or ray tracing? I've heard targets of around 50 to 70% generation on generation. But that does seem to be the full chip configuration. And again, we'll have to wait and see how all of that ends up falling. But what is interesting is that a very well-known leaker, Panzolide, is stating that the full configuration of GB202 does indeed sport a 512-bit memory bus. So this actually does seem to be very correct information. We've also seen a lot of images that do also seem to confirm this. But the full chip is certainly not what we're going to be seeing for the 5090 of course instead the bus width is going to be shaved down to just 448 bit this means that we could see for example 28 gigabytes of memory which is still quite a lot but it also also well snipped down quite considerably as well now the timing of this leak is quite interesting We've also seen quite a lot of comments regarding the cooler of the GPU. It seems that it is going to be using a dual fan design. This is, of course, for the Founders Edition model. And obviously, AIBs can do what the hell they want. There's also been reports that the 5090 is being tested at 600 watts internally at NVIDIA. But this is, again, very meaningless. I've covered this before briefly, but just as a quick reminder... This could be just internal testing. For example, how is the cooler scaling at um, higher temperatures? What about the chip, the PCB? Are they handling the juice being thrown at them and so on? Don't forget that the 4090 operates at a default of 450 watts, but many cards can hit 600 watts with, um, well, just increasing the power limit. Uh, it does have a slightly different connector. In some cases, you can even just buy a different connector and flash the BIOS, and well, that's slightly outside the scope of this video, but it's not particularly difficult to do. You can just Google it if you want. Either way, what is interesting, of course, is that this leaves a lot of potential for a 5090 Ti, or a Super, or perhaps a Titan. 
Now, I've actually been given some specifications a couple of days ago, actually, regarding the 1590 and 1590 Ti. And this is actually from a couple of different sources. Unfortunately, not only do these uh, specifications differ slightly from one another, neither quite matches what, what Panzer Lied said. Now, it's very possible that my information is older or not quite correct. I'm going to include it here just for the sake of it as low confidence. I would probably say that it is not right. But again, I'm going to throw it in. I was told that the 1590 Ti seems to have a target of 160 to 176 SM with 384-bit bus. That bus seems too narrow, especially because, again, Panzer Lyde's 1590 is 448-bit. And the 1590 that I was told about was 384-bit bus with 144 SM. Notice that the watts here are 450 and 320, respectively. Now, personally, I would be surprised if NVIDIA did cut down the number that far in terms of the SM for the 1590 and the bus. Um, I would say that Panzerline specs for the bus would not be too surprising. But here's the thing. Either way, you can agree that if this is true, it le and that is the 448-bit bus, it leaves a lot of room for the 1590 Ti with a wider bus. Now, of course, NVIDIA have multiple times in the past cut the bus width for number of SMs for flagship models. This is not anything new. This has been something that you've seen pretty consistently before. So... I mean, if you look back at, let's say, the RTX uh, 4090, I think it had 100, what was it, 128 SM out of 144 on the die. A lot of folks are telling me that the um, RTX 60 architecture is actually the architecture designed to take out the RDNA 5 GPUs from AMD, but obviously RDNA 5 is not launching anytime soon. Essentially, in the GPU space, for the high end anyway, NVIDIA just has no competition for the foreseeable future. Um, even if you say that RDNA 5 launches late 2025, which I personally think there's a good chance it could be delayed, but let's just assume it is 2025, that still gives a minimum of around a year for NVIDIA to basically do what they want. So they have no real incentive to rush things, and they basically have no competition, so they can well, do what the hell they want in terms of just putting out chips. And obviously, there's a few other reasons that cutting this down makes a lot of sense. It isn't just that gaming GPUs are being used for the GB202 die. It's worth remembering, of course, that this same die almost certainly is going to be used for professional level GPUs. We've seen the same thing for, well, multiple generations of cards now for NVIDIA. So again, it makes sense. They're going to maximize profits by giving PC gamers a decent enough product, which is going to probably incentivize some people, the hardcore, to upgrade from the 4090. Definitely be a lot more tempting for RTX 20 users, for example. Um, and of course, they can also sell the best dies, quote-unquote, to uh, AI folks or professional users, whatever. And eventually, in six months, as an example, that's not a leak, Later, they can launch like the supers or what have you based on market conditions. What is going to be very interesting is what the pricing is. Now, again, RTX uh, 60, which is Rubin, is designed apparently to beat RTX, I'm uh, sorry, RDNA 5. So, really, NVIDIA only has to worry about pricing things how it feels uh, it should. The RTX 4080, if memory serves, launched at 1200 bucks. Obviously, these are MSRP prices at launch. You can certainly buy AIB cards, of course, which were a lot more expensive or what have you. And that's not taking into account things like pr uh, price gouging, which I'm sure retailers won't do this time, right? Right? <laughs> anyway, the upgraded super hardware, the RTX 4080 super, was, uh, I think, 1000 bucks at launch. Uh, 1600 US dollars was what NVIDIA demanded for the 4090, which again featured 128 SM out of 144. So what will NVIDIA do for the RTX 50 cards? Uh, the exact bill of materials for the Blackwell GPUs obviously isn't known yet. For example, what are they doing with the cooler? What materials is it made out of? What are they doing? Uh, sorry, what's happening with the memory prices for GDDR7? Um, I haven't seen those personally, but maybe they're out there and I just have missed them. So if I have, let me know on Twitter or what have you. Personally, I can expect that the 5080 is not going to be any cheaper than the 4080's initial launch price. 
and I would not be surprised if both the 48, sorry, the 5080 and the 5090 are more expensive. Um, one last tiny little bit of news. I'm just going to throw this into the end of this video. Um, I'm hearing that there's a very good chance RDNA 4 is not going to be at Computex. Um, I haven't been able to confirm that yet. I've just heard it from a couple of different people. And I'm basically getting a little bit of conflicting information. Some people are still really assuring me that it will be or launched this year. But others are telling me no, it is definitely not going to be. So I'm just I'm just throwing it in here. Um, I'm only putting it in because I don't think I'm going to be releasing a video for the next couple of days because I'm going to be super busy. Um, so basically, I won't have time to confirm it. Um, I'm most likely over the next couple of days because I'm going to be going away and doing a few bits and bobs. So yeah, um, I will be working on another project, which probably will be up maybe by the weekend, but I'd have already recorded it. So I just need to do a little bit of video editing. With that said, guys, take care of yourselves. Bye for now.